everyone, it's a vibrant Tuesday morning today. We offer a lovely opportunity for you to join this amazing crew. It's our daily cruise to the island of pure happiness. This is not cruise. I'm going to wake up. What? This team what? has waking me up in the future. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Good morning, good morning and welcome. That's right, we're setting sail. And of course, we have with us your daily dose of excitement. Yeah. And great moments. Mm -hmm. Get ready, get ready, get ready to embark on this uh, <clears throat> culinary journey like no other. We're going to have an amazing chef uh, take over in the kitchen very soon. It's cooking up a storm right there in the galley. Let's not do as if what? I don't know that that... What? What? You, you're not a big fan of coffee. I know that, you were handing me the coffee. That thing is not for me. What? Come on, we've got a whole <laughs> lot of treats for you, an excitement planner for you. Mm. Welcome. It's going to be one show. My name is Mike Mesikeno. And I'm Tisa Lyle. It is a pleasure. Thank you so much for letting us into your homes once mm. again this morning. You know, we've <laughs> curated a very special edition just to get you on the edge of your seat. Meticulous. Mm -hmm. That's what we've done on the show today. And that's no bluff. But let's dive right into the show. Yeah. Of course, it's going to be one of the MM is also just by the side. Of course. So we're going to set to give you a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. Uh, May is, uh, May is, well, what now? It's, it's almost the middle of May. Yeah, yeah. we're getting, getting almost the middle of May. And, uh, well, <laughs> almost it's, halfway through the year. That's the thing to uh, note. That's the thing to note, yeah. yeah exactly. Whew. And uh, something else you should note is that you can watch Wake Up Nigeria anywhere in the world with our mobile app. It's available for you to download from iOS or indeed Google Play Store. Mm. Our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC is always active on social media platforms. And with that hashtag, you can be a part of the best breakfast show on Nigeria. TVC Entertainment underscore, that's the handle across all social media platforms. Exactly. Let's get straight to it. You can watch us uh, live uh, on the All Drive frequency. That's a terrestrial band. It yeah. is 49. And then if it's DTT, you are yeah. watching on GoTV16. But we also stream on YouTube. Mm -hmm. TVC Entertainment. Indeed. Miss that. All right. So many ways to watch. No excuses if you need to move around. Sure. And uh, what are you sure. watching today? Mm. We have quite a bit on parenting. Ooh, this one is big. Talking about a very important. This one topic. is big. This one is big. It's it's a bit yeah. uh, it's, touchy it or is. something, you it know. Is. So uh, obesity in children. Mm. Okay. So um, we have Coco coming back to talk to us today, okay. and uh, she has been someone who's extremely expressive and she's a really great communicator. She's utilizing this skill in different ways to help people <clears throat> and help young ones. It's all about mental health awareness as Mental Health Awareness Week is here. Uh, we have Ese Ayabene coming to talk to us today, a practicing uh, counseling psychologist. And she's been doing this for the last decade, specializing in working with individuals in need with the primary objective of aiding clients to overcome trauma and of course enhance their mental health and mental resilience. Uh, it's all about anxiety, depression, and suicide ideation. Mm. And uh, it's a big one. We'll try and dissect that later on. And after that, we'll have Bola Niwa Asheshe Olusanjo. He's a Nigerian creative who has a deep passion for artistic expression, evident in his diverse work across production and entertainment. Despite his extensive involvement in these fields, his musical talents have also shown through, particularly in his local community where he has been actively involved in assemblies. He'll be performing today. And finally, we have Bob Cow. Based in New York City, Cow started his fashion career producing local events at a night in Tokyo. Now, the success of that event paved the way for his career as a writer in fashion, and he's even been published at Chasseur Magazine, Sauvain Magazine, Hello Style, and many others. He's working on something amazing here in Lagos, and we're going to be talking about it very soon. All right. So MM is here also. Show, yeah, Pak Cho, Pak Cho, Pak Cho. Oh, no, Dino. It's good. We're good. What's happening? Actually. What's happening? What? This one is switched <laughs> into pigeon. What? I saw it on Bad Rich. <laughs> bad? No. I, I, it's very important, by the way, that your kids should learn how to speak pigeon also. Hmm. It's gone past that point where, you know then when we used to grow up and they said no vernacular? Mm -hmm. And then it seemed as if you're speaking pigeon, you were ill-trained. Mm -hmm. Sure. It is a means of communication and a very strong one. Apart from English, it is the most acceptable language. 
of nationwide. Course, yeah. And it's, it, 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 it helps That's you communicate. If, yeah. So, and when it's communication, look, I love somebody, um, somebody said something. Uh, I think I was listening to Ricky Gervais and he said something like, the world is so woke now that people are going to study Taylor Swift as a course in university. <laughs> so we have people studying Yoruba. Yeah. Then people are also studying Pidgin English. If you so can study a lot Beyonce, has changed. I don't think Taylor Swift <laughs> is far fetched. Really. So a lot has changed. My point is that Pidgin is a means of communication, and just like every other language, so you know, it cuts it. across Nigeria, yes, okay. but it also cuts across some other African, um, African um, or oh. at least countries yeah. of there, there African origin, there yeah. you go. Uh, where where there you go. Africans were taken, like uh, the West Indies, yeah. Jamaica, mm -hmm. uh, some parts of Brazil. Oh yeah. yes, um, so, yeah. so many places yeah. where yeah. Africans were very, very, yeah. were taken to. Mm -hmm. Pigeon cuts across. Yeah, it does. You'd be surprised. You might say something in pigeon somewhere. Mm -hmm. Somewhere, and there's somebody. And and you know what? My friend was. In, yeah. My friend studied in Malaysia, yeah, and he said something. He said, um, "The Caucasians and the Asians that, that what the what, what when when the when when we speak pigeon, like they always blown away. You know why? So they know the words individually. Yeah. But it is the way the structure. The link. You know, yeah. pigeon na English because mm -hmm. of the words where they pigeon. Then they may normal English words, but now how you think they put them? So they just. <laughs> like, uh, like, okay, I know the words, but ah, the way you're putting it is like, ah, oh, man. So it was always like that. So uh, the th way that we way. structure our thoughts is the way we communicate in pigeon. Mm. It's not really grammatical, mm. so to speak. It's a, it's a thought process. So it could be the same sentence, but the way it's delivered is different. It's different. different. It's different. Yeah. 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 So it's <laughs> nothing wrong. Teach them pigeon. They should learn how to speak it. Yeah. How many of your kids know how to speak pigeon? I know my kids understand it. But speaking it, mm, I'm not sure. How about you? I've never thought about it, to be <laughs> yeah. honest. I've never, I've never had a conversation with them in that because even when I'm in the hiring process for helps, yeah. hey, one of them say, please, no pigeon English you in see? this house. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I, it's if you a want to communicate with your people, ah, do it outside. They'll get somewhere and don't, they'll speak pigeon, they'll don't. be accepted faster. Mm. Yeah, because you know what? Even growing up, I really ran away from speaking PG yeah, English. And then, and then it's funny how now, you know, in my interaction with a lot of markets people, yeah, I have, have to, to speak pigeon. Yeah. So when yeah, you have to buy and all of true. that. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So what are your thoughts on all of that? Good morning. The News on Wake Up Niger. I am Mike Messicano. Members of the organized labor are calling for the immediate reversal of the recent hike in electricity tariff. Organized labor and its civil society allies have picketed the offices of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, the Transmission Company of Nigeria, and the Electricity Distribution Company in Abuja, Lagos, Oyo, and Delta States. We have more in these packages from our correspondents and reporters. The Federal Executive Council has ordered that all vehicles, generators, or tricycles being procured by government and its agencies must be powered by CNG, solar or electric. This is one of the major decisions reached by the council before it adjourned its marathon proceedings till Tuesday. Affected by the order or new request by the Nigerian Customs Service, the Shippers Council, an agency of the marine and blue economy, which had sought approval to buy several hundreds of operational vehicles to be powered by petrol. The council approved the request that they must be CNG vehicles. Also, a request by the Federal Capital Territory to buy petrol generators was also approved but the council insisted they must be powered by CNG or solar. Now to foreign stories. Melinda French Gates on Monday said she would resign as co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that she has helped to lead since 2000. As part of a separation agreement from former husband Bill Gates, French Gates said she will receive an additional $12.5 billion for her charitable work. French Gates said she plans to focus her giving on groups that focus on women and families. This is not a decision I came to lightly, she said in a statement posted on X. I am immensely proud of the foundation that Bill and I built together and of the extraordinary work it's going to address inequities around the world. French Gates said she plans to leave the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on the 7th of June and she will share more about her future charitable plans on sports and of course the news will take a time out now stay with us back in a beat you exercise wherever you are in fact some offices in in asia have a special break time for doing stretches and yoga like exercises yeah, they also have a time for sleep they also yeah like a siesta yeah they have, have a um, 
some uh, like a cot yeah, on your deck. So you just yeah. push it out like that. Pull out just... your your chair and, have, um, and snooze. Just sleep. Time for... What? Just what? What? What's this I don't one? know what. It... I don't know what you're talking about, too. Look like Michael Jackson. <laughs> okay, well, uh, there's uh, something quite uh, uh, sensitive. Uh, maybe it, it might have been um, perfect for a woman Wednesday if all the ladies were here. But um, as, a, as being a man involved, in fact, two, two cases, being a man involved, uh, I, I think that in some ways we do have something to say about it, yeah. even though it is going to be at... Uh, at odds to what is out there in the public space, said from a man. I, I was just going through something now. I, I, it, this just swiped across the, the, the father of, I don't know if you heard about that four-year-old girl yeah, who, yeah. who yeah. was uh, putting up yeah. obscene pics and all that. He was arrested, arrested, and the girl has been taken into, uh, I don't want, not custody is not the word, yeah. Yeah. but into, yeah, into custody. Yes. Yeah, let's say yes, custodia. Yes. You know, taken into custody doesn't have to seem like, you yeah. know, so that one, I, I, I hope that man learns his lesson and uh, other people learn their lesson from Probably, that, yeah. you know. But uh, this is not the first time uh, men are speaking about women's bodies and uh, that is in reference to a clip online uh, from uh, Femi Lazarus. Before now, Jerry Eze had also uh, said something about this and that's referring to the monthly cycle of women and um, how... Uh, the attitude or how their hormones affect them and saying that, look, no matter what happens during that period, it's who you are. If you are a, an ill-tempered person, if you are, um, if you are not well-mannered, don't blame it on that time of the month. You know, and as a man, I thought about it. You know, people have been saying back and forth, oh, you don't uh, listen to him or what, what. In, in, where, in, what, in, in what universe, in what reality, in what dimension is it, is it appropriate to talk about something I never, mm. I have never, mm. I don't, and I will never experience? experience. Yeah. How? <laughs> somebody said that one of the parts of success is looking at somebody who has told a part and then you follow. In fact, many people in business and everywhere will tell you that. Do you understand? So that means that you cannot take away how important experience is concerning everything. You cannot talk about what you yeah. haven't experienced. If you as a person, and that's the problem we have with many coaches and all of that. I have, there's people I see on Facebook and they're talking about, oh, get rich, do this, do this, do this, do that, do that, do that, do that. They're trying to sell a book and all of that. And then you're looking at what have you done? What are your antecedents? Mm. There are two ladies here, I just, and I would really want them. I just them. want to do some clicks for Mike in the building. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Mike. Uh, you've, yeah. said, you've said, you've sort of pulled everything, encapsulated everything into a, a, a sad fact. And we, we women can say we are, we're sad about the fact that men will never experience it. What it means to actually look at your calendar and count the days so your body decides to betray you. And it feels like a betrayal for some women um, because there's just nothing you can do about it. There's aches, pains, headaches, dizziness, anxiety. anxiety Even depression. Depre that is all linked with the monthly cycle. So I'm, I'm it is something beyond explanation if, you've, if you cannot experience it yourself. Um, and for some women, it gets so bad that they can't even process just basic menial activities, mm -hmm. basic stuff. Mm -hmm. They can't even process. It's like your body is saying, nah, no, sit down. You're, you're not doing anything. I mean, just hunger for some men. Yeah. They become <laughs> they just hunger. Irrational. We don't think straight. Oh, to, you come back home and they don't put food and all of that. Your thoughts oh. are this thing. And then somebody's talking about different things. Somebody's talking about... Hmm. Maybe we well, are being very. Somebody's talking about bleeding. Mm, somebody's yeah. talking about, uh, in quote, life going out of you in some ways. Yeah. I, I'm trying to, think, because I don't, order, I don't understand it. Yeah. I don't. I've never experienced it. So the best I can do is to try to imagine what would be happening, and that is the most I can do. Okay. Imagine, um, and then when it yeah. gets to that point, and when it gets to how women behave, mm. I shut up. I th Mike, I, this is a. 
it's been an age-long problem, actually. It's a reprogramming. It, it's a programming, right, that has been sort of engineered into our mindset as men or as boys and girls, even growing up, because we saw our fathers, yeah. you know, do it to our mothers. Mm -hmm. Our mothers never stopped. They kept on going. Just kept pushing. They kept yeah. pushing. Our grandmothers kept on going. Yeah. They would go to the farms, even yeah. during their, their periods. No matter how they were feeling, they would always cater to the men. They would always do what they can yeah. for the men, regardless of how they were feeling. And the men, on the other hand, couldn't actually understand what they were going through because they really? did not yeah. actually communicate it. Mm. Do you understand? And then... Even to the point where we've also heard a lot of men say, uh, are you the first person to be pregnant? Uh, or are you the first person, person to, to give, give birth? birth? <laughs> that one, that one. The last <laughs> one we just sent out that one. You want, exactly. you, as a man, you want to talk about pregnancy? Exactly. Because... You can as well talk about it now. Yeah, Since if you can talk about menstruation, you can always talk about it. Ah, that pregnancy is nothing now. Exactly. Wow. Because, you, you can as well yeah, say that. They, we saw our mothers, even while they were pregnant, they would go to the farms, they would carry firewoods, they would carry wow. buckets of water on their head. Because... It, for to them, it was easy. They were not expressing their pains. Yeah. They were not expressing how they were truly feeling. They were not communicating it. So the men did not understand what they were so, going through. So right now, those and men so are now, because we have to come that. to the yeah. age where there's a lot of education, there's a lot of awareness. People speaking are now up. encouraged to yeah. speak up. Yeah. Then it's now comes, it now comes to the fore. Yeah. And then when women talk about the things that their bodies are going through, men are like, I don't understand. My mother did it. So what are wow. you on about? Mm. So first of all, for those that don't understand, every woman reacts and responds to it differently. It's not the same for every woman. So we forget yeah. that yeah. we forget that our hormones, our when when we're in that at that time of the month, our hormones experience a, like a variation um, of different changes. You know, you know what I would do? That in, that that affects the chemicals in our brains, <laughs> which induces mood swings. It induces, and sometimes the inducement can take a different direction. <laughs> it depends on the so, on the on the on the um, on, on the direction of the hormone. Is it <laughs> no to this week, this month, this month? <laughs> mm. Yeah. If Everybody's going to hear, your husband will hear it. If I was in an organization, what I would do is that I would get so, women to sit on a panel wow. and talk to women about, about their it. bodies yeah. and if they need to manage it. And I sit down mm. by the side and I should think of how do I support a lady in this point? Thank you, Mike. If I go Thank somewhere you, and they say, Thank you. a lady Mike for is president. going to present of words, it depends <laughs> on the organization and president. So, uh, we know what you are presidenting. <laughs> so, but, but so, let so, let me say something. Let me say something. Let me just say something. Um, okay, go ahead. I have seen a situation, I have seen, where a woman drove herself to the hospital, gave birth, mm -hmm. drove herself back. Mm -hmm. I have also seen a situation where a woman scared to the hospital, lost her life. Mm. Two women, pregnant, but look at... Different yeah, situations. Different situations. Yeah. And I, I can't even start to fathom. Yeah. Mm. It's hard to... It's so hard that, to that, that lets you know it, it, it is insensitive. Mm. Mm. And I dare say, look, I'm, I'm holding myself for some words. It, 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 is, it, it shows a lack of emotional intelligence that any man or at any time would, or anybody, this is not a man, anybody no. would talk about something you've not experienced. Yeah. You I, also, I also would like it, to... It, I, I wonder where, where that comes in. It comes in a place of see finish. Huh. In a marriage. Amen. Yes. See finish. Yes. So yes. Finish started from the day you said I do. You know. It also comes <laughs> from that because, day. because no. But wait, listen. Yeah, this is what I what I what I'm what I'm saying here. It comes from a place of because when you when you have seen someone to the point where you know them in and out, it sort of affects your your level of appreciation yeah, for, that for them. You don't see their value. Mm -hmm. You don't see so much in what they are doing. You don't appreciate it. Yeah. And, and we're, that's why we're having this conversation. It's bringing to the fore that men, dear men, mm -hmm. understand your woman's period. Yeah. Find a way to help her and support her and appreciate her. Yeah. Don't say, my mother did it. She is not your mother. Times are changing. At this Please, point, let's try to normalize highlight... supporting and appreciate our, appreciating our women. In short, whether the time of that time of the month or, or not. not.
speaking of time of the month, um, 28th of May? Yes, the 28th of May is World Menstrual Menstrual Hygiene Day. Hygiene Awareness Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we at TVC, yeah, Women's, TVC Network, Women's Network, we're working on something very special. We're mm -hmm. trying to make sure that we get uh, hygiene products and uh, clothes to uh, young girls not just young girls but also yeah. women so that this time we're having a community outreach program yeah. where yeah. we're reaching out to women in yeah. Bariga yeah. women and young girls in Bariga because there's a particular slummy um, side of Bariga, Bariga yeah. that we're going to be catering to because these are women these are young girls who have to drop out of school due to um, lack of you know um, access to sanitary products yeah. and even some of these women are getting reproductive Issues, because health we'll issues. We'll pick up on this. Yes. So, um, about this. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk, talk about, about this. this. Talk Go about ahead. this. All right, let's take a time. I'll be back in a bit. Hello and good morning. Welcome back. It's still Wake Up Nigeria at this point. Let's take a quick look at what's happening of the covers of the dailies. And uh, today is, let me just confirm, Tuesday, yeah. May 14th, 2024. Uh, I have the Vanguard newspaper with me here this morning. I, I also have Mike yeah, yeah. <laughs> with me this morning. Uh, and uh, quite a lot happening on the covers uh, this morning. It says here, tariff hike, labor protests, disconnects NERC, TCN, Disco's offices. And uh, there's quite a lot of photo stories there. Uh, on the cover of the Vanguard. Um, Mike, I'm not sure if you, you have it with you there. Mm, no, you see the, no, the no, photo no, stories no, there? Yeah, okay, but yeah, I can see uh, we've spoken about it in the news also, and uh, we'll probably get the, the packages across to you sure. uh, later this thing. But yes, people are talking about it at the tariff, and the thing is about the how uh, regularized is it? Because I remember when uh, uh, AEDC, that's the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, was given a fine of over 200 million for charging other bands as high as band A. Oh, and sure. so I think there's a lot of, uh, should, how should, not on accountability, but should I say uh, the structure, the lack of structure is still being evident in how these yeah. plants are being rolled out yeah. and how uh, people are being uh, tariffed for electricity. So the, the, the Minister of Power has to put his house in order. Let's get this thing straight. Let's be sure at least you, you know, let, let, there, let there be that. Let's be sure of exactly what we're paying. And then if we're talking about the hike, it's, no, it's all been back and forth. Let's be sure. Let's get something straight. And for me, I don't know why. I, I'm still trying to understand why a band should be higher, even if they receive more power and all of that. I, I think it should be a constant, I, I, you know. So I, I, th that is a very, very strong argument. Um, however, being a constant, there are some people in some certain communities who may not be able to afford what is constant in some other areas. I'm just trying to think about some low-income earning, high-density areas in Lagos, for instance, uh, and if they can afford, they can actually afford uh, a tariff that's as high as what you probably find in, uh, in the GRE, Kedja, for instance. Uh, which is not to say that it should be that different, but probably just a little bit of a difference might be necessary for some people uh, to have good power. Uh, the photo story is here. Abuja, Yenagua, Kaduna, and Ikeja um, on the protest there. Uh, if you grab the Vanguard, you'll be able to see what we mean. Uh, it also says here, CBN will retain high interest rates to tame inflation, according to Cardoso. Uh, on the escalating public service wage bills, increasing costs of governance, um, according to Akbabio, their story is on page 15 of the Vanguard. And I'll wrap it by this one. Uh, it says here, um, Tinubu directs mandatory procurement of CNG-powered vehicles by MDAs. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, natural gas vehicles, I believe, CNG, natural yeah. gas. Uh, and that's, that's an interesting one. Uh, we have with us also the New Telegraph newspaper. It says here, Fubara vows to probe Wike's administration moves up, or rather moves to set up panel of inquiry. Page two has more on that. Which other headline do we have? Uh, yes, another headline on the CNG-powered vehicles here. Um, the electricity tariff hike story comes up here as well. Federal government pushing more Nigerians into poverty, crippling businesses, say NLC and TUC. Um, on herder attacks here, it says food shortage imminent as Benue farmers desert uh, communities. Pages 4, 6, and 26 have more on that. 
Um, Nigeria records $282.6 million <coughs> total direct remittances in Q1 of 2024. And uh, let's see, CBN stops waivers for contraventions of Forex regulations. Quite a bit on the cover of the new Telegraph, don't you think, Mike? Mm, yeah. Quite a lot um, of headlines. Of course, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, governor of every state uh, of, of appointed a new uh, chief judge of the state and spoke about uh, uh, d looking into the past administration, you know, saying he's going to probe the past administration and all of that. So, and I still maintain my stance and I'm like, is this governance? Are you trying to be vindictive? What is happening? Are you probing this thing because it will take the state forward? Mm. Let's govern. Let's not play politics. Let's govern. It's time. It's what it's been over a year plus now. Let's govern. The people matter the most. That's my own. I have with me the Daily Independent. Uh, still more stories on the electricity tariff hike protests, power sector privatization, federal government's worst policy mistake, say labor. Uh, insisting on reversal of tariff hike, says increase unacceptable. Asks federal government to reverse privatization cover assets from investors, paralyzes business activities at discos, NERC offices nationwide. Um, it says here also, uh, no Nigerian child will be excluded from quality education, according to Tinumbu here. CSOs ask Nigerians to rise against apartheid policy in power sector, which is something Mike has already touched on uh, today. Uh, FEC adjourns meeting concludes deliberations uh, today and um, tighten grip on nation's enemies, uh, Sonwolu tells armed forces. Page six has more on that. There's still quite a few uh, other headlines to look at here, but we are running fast spent on time at this point. And we have MM standing by in the kitchen. Yes, we are standing by here in the kitchen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. With me is Beleful Gang herself. Beleful Gang. Ah, what a name. Absolutely love it. This morning, she'll be making potato porridge. Ha! Sweet potatoes, I must add. Because <laughs> you see these sweet potatoes, it is the potatoes. It, it, I think I feel that. It is. But sweet potatoes should have come before yam porridge. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Exactly. Because there's the how certain... Yeah, is. because of how sweet it is. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, even with... Even make, while making yam porridge, you mm -hmm. sometimes people add sweet it's potatoes sweet. Exactly. to give it that sweetness. Exactly. Um, but exactly. this, this morning, we're having just sweet potatoes. So let's talk about the ingredients, shall we? Yes, we shall. So we have sweet potatoes. We have our salt, our seasoning. And our ugu leaf, vegetables, just need a little bit of vegetables mm -hmm. to add to the nutrients and all. Then we have our proteins, here we have our komo, and our sorted mix, that's the new era, that they say. Okay. Our body shaki, okay. then we have our pepper mix, then our smoked fish. Ah. We're going to scatter it with protein. We're going to scatter it with protein, like Belleful Gang says. Yes. And um, so this meal is sort of modest. <laughs> I, like, I just love how modest it is. And you can absolutely make this on a budget. Yes. Right. Exactly. Less than 10K are done. Which one is 10K? Less less, 10K. With even less than, 5K. Yes, less than 5K. Yeah, because, I mean, if you're buying sweet potatoes, how much of sweet potato costs cost now? It's hard to find one for 500 now. And you get like 1,000. Yeah, you get like 1,000. Like 1, you know, some reasonable um, um, num um, quantity for 1,000. And then, banla, you can get like for 500. Yeah, but it's not costly. It's not like 1,000 in the market. It's not expensive. Yes. So. <laughs> okay, so yeah, and then you have like your pepper, tomatoes, onions, and then for more, you can do without the beef uh, if you you wanna you wanna go small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wanna you know go like budget budget friendly. Yeah, so you can do without the the assorted. Just do with the pomos. And ugu is cheap now. Hundred naira can get mm, ugu. Get or you could even do without. You could use do greens. Or you can even use um, um scent leaves. Or you could use scent leaves. Exactly. Uh -huh. That just is even cheaper as well. Exactly. If ugu yeah. is if it's a dry season and it's hard to find. Find Ugu for a at a very food. cheaper amount, yeah. Yeah. right? Because there's some days that you know it, when the season is really dry, it's hard to it's find Ugu. But hey, guys, I'm uh, pretty excited about this morning's breakfast because it's very rich in protein. Yes, breakfast on a budget. Yes, but breakfast on a budget. <laughs> I like what Billy Food Gang is tagging it 
breakfast on a butter. That's what we're having this morning. Very modest recipe. Absolutely love it. So right there in the pot, what do we have there? We have our water, boiling our water, so okay. we can boil our sweet potato. Okay. Because we know how hard it is before it gets soft and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So we boil that. Okay. And so we, when do the ingredients start to go? When in? it's soft already, that's when we now start adding our ingredients. We add our um, no proteins so that at least the flavors mm. can they all you marinate know, marry, marry each yes. other and exactly. it becomes a match made in heaven absolutely love it i see that the pomo and the assorted meats has already been marinated and yes. steamed yes it it's has. been cooked already it's been cooked already mm. okay so it's seasoning just, salt mm. i know that we like to now that gas is expensive we like to do cook on cook food in a rush you just pour everything Shop. in <laughs> there was there was a cooking um um whatever i saw online where they were making um porridge and they didn't bother to steam the fish like pre-cook it they just put just the fish every, wow. put everything in. just get ready I'm yeah hungry. just get ready <laughs> Let everything show, I'm just cook, right? Is. Yeah, but um, well, just try to ensure that you, you know, sort of steam your beef and your, you know, whatever it's your protein. It so, also, so it also helps to, you know, the heat also helps to sort of kill off all of those bacteria and, you know, germs, yeah. you know, that are, you know, you know, on the on the beef or your your protein. You just want to ensure that it's, you know, safe, safe. to eat. So just make sure you properly steam it yeah. before you cook with it. And uh, yes, guys, we are right here in the kitchen with the bellyful gang herself. Yes, and she's making potato porridge on a budget. Yes, modest, nice, simple, you know, keep it simple. Great. Okay, so right here we are going to just gonna wait for our water to cook and the water has boiled already. Oh it's boiling already, yes. so we're gonna throw pour in our potato. potatoes. Yes. Okay, so please go ahead and uh, oh, remember guys that you could also use what other if to replace the potatoes, what else can we use? We can make use of yam, you mean inside instead of using sweet instead potatoes. Of using sweet potatoes. We can make use of our yam, our mm. normal yam or our normal Irish potato but Sweet potato is actually still better mm. because it's high in fiber, it's high uh -huh. in vitamin A, yeah. vitamin C. Yeah. Unlike our yam that has more carbohydrates. Mm. This is and low. Sugar. In so carbs. this is more like fit fam. Yeah. yeah. So if you just want to like get that nutrient mm. very little with little sugar and mm. all that. Sweet potatoes you, is your Yeah, you opt for your sweet potatoes. Exactly absolutely love it those of you on a fit farm you know we got you you know we got you yes you know so we've not done anything <laughs> for you today we have right we have to go on a quick break guys the show continues in a bit stay with us now we're about to have a parenting conversation that has been difficult for a lot of parents to tell other parents who happen to be their peers in this parenting game and it is a game especially when children seem to be winning the game against some parents who haven't figured out, you know, how to checkmate some issues. This is a major issue of childhood obesity. Joining us to talk is Coco. And she uh, has mentioned in the past that her first memories in school were being told she was expressive and a good communicator. It's helped her over the years to utilize this skill to help effectively communicate with people and help young people. Welcome back to the show, Coco. Thank you. I'm excited. I practically feel like I live here now. Oh, well, <laughs> However, I want to move in here. <laughs> How's it work? You definitely brightened up our couch. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. Thank you. But this is a delicate one. Yeah. It's a touchy one. Yeah. Um, too often, we're walking through the supermarket, seeing a young girl or young boy that is wearing clothes that are probably two, three years above what they should be wearing. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of parents buying almost, most likely adult sized shoes yeah. for their kids. Um, and this is probably as a result of the adult sized portions these children are eating. Mm -hmm. So what do you think this problem is? Obviously we know it's a parenting issue, but uh, let's hear your side of things. 
Well, first we have to talk about, you know, what are the factors, you know, what really causes obesity, you know, um, poor health, unhealthy um, food choices, yeah. you know, bad family habits, you know, um, lack of exercise. Sometimes a toxic environment can create that as well and late night eating, mm -hmm. you know, but first let's talk about what happens in the home. Mm -hmm. You know, um, parents, on the other hand, are the biggest enablers. But let's put aside the issue of um, um, health issues without, you know, not the quite minimal. You know, let's talk about what the parents are providing. What do we have in their, in, what did they have in their fridge? You know, and if you have, you know, if you, if you have like unhealthy choices like pizzas, leftover chicken and chips, you know, you know um, and um, soda and all that stuff, it is what the child sees, it's what, that's what the child will eat. So you have to make sure that you fill your fridge with healthier choices. You know, but parents sometimes will feel like, okay, we're in a hurry, we do not have to make that cooked food, you know, and then that child, our kids now become obese because they do not have fine cooked food to eat. And at the end of the day, they, they tend to, um, you know, get used to this cook, um, to this um, junk food, and you know sometimes they now, you know, eventually get when you have the time to make the the cooked food, they reject it because they have become accustomed to eating, you know, the junk food, you know, and um, you know, and as I, as I was saying um, earlier on, I had a parent one time whose child was like. God help me, maybe the child was probably like an adult 18 or 20. And I was a bit concerned and I walked up to the parent and I said to her, you know, you know, um, is your child okay? You know, is, is there, a... and she said to me, oh no, he doesn't have a health issue. She said to me that he just likes to eat burgers and pizzas. Okay. And I said to her, okay, who buys this junk food? And she said to me, I, that she does. Mm. And I'm like, so who is the parent and who is the child? Mm. You are killing your child. You are an enabler. If that child refuses cooked food, you know, and wants this um, junk food and, you know, continually throws tantrums that if it's not burger, I'm not going to eat it, then you have to insist. Do not allow the child manipulate you. What you need to do is that just keep telling the child you have to eat cooked food, and if the child keeps throwing tantrums, the child will eventually come to the realization that he or she is hungry mm -hmm. and will go for that cooked food. So now we, we've sort of turned it into a nutritional topic here, but we know that this is majorly a parenting issue. Yes, it is. A lot of parents have not figured out how to say no to their child. Now, for whatever reason, um, it could have taken many years for this child to be conceived. It could be this child is the prized possession of their grandparents. It could be this child is the heir to a wealthy, uh, you know, lineage, or is a prince or is a princess, and they just do not want this child to throw tantrums, be upset, or feel anger. So what is the parent's role at this point? How do they take control of this? Maybe it's already, um, it's already a mess. Where do they start from now? They've realized they've made a mistake. What do they do next? Well, as I'm, I'm a mother of one myself. I have yeah. an only child. And if, when you've waited so long to have one child, you really do not want to hasten the child being, you know, going back to heaven. Mm. You know, you really want to keep the child here. Mm. So when a child, you know, and that's why, we, you know, just because we have suffered, we've lingered, you, know, uh, you know, our wait time has lingered. Mm. You know, it doesn't mean we should, we should do that. So it, back to what I said earlier. You, what you do is that you gradually, you understand, you do not fall into that manipulation. You do not, you know, because kids tend to manipulate. When they see that, okay, I'll, I'll just throw the tantrums once or twice, mm -hmm. she might, he or she might, might you know, just budge. Yeah. You know, but when you stand firm, kids eventually come to the realization that they're hungry. Trust me, because when you see that, okay, mommy is not getting all carried away yeah. or grandma is not getting all carried away with your tantrums, eventually you will get hungry. And trust me, you will eat. So we said parents here, which is both mom and dad. Yeah. And you could have one parent come to that realization that, okay, this child needs help. This child needs to be controlled, disciplined. But the other parent is not falling in line with that. Um, so this is it's a touchy area. The, the mindset is, I don't want my child to go through what I went through. As a parent, probably when you were growing up as a child, you know, you probably didn't get all those snacks and all those good things. Mm -hmm. You couldn't go to the restaurants. Mm -hmm. And now you want your child to experience this. So where do we go from there? 
Well, you know, like, you know, parents are always enablers in these things, you know, and that is why the husband, the, or rather the father and, and the mother must have discussions, private discussions concerning this, you understand, and agree. Let it not be that you are trying to lord it over your husband, okay. or the wife is trying to lord it over the, the man. Yeah. You know, both of you have to have a con con um, conversation that is centered on your child. This is not about you now. You understand because what we were exposed to as kids is not what we are, the kids are exposed to now they have more choices mm -hmm. so the the mother and the father have to sit together and you know have conversations and say look let's put our child let our child be the center you know of this thing this is let's just con concern ourselves with our child being healthy and not falling sick. And I'm sure any reasonable parent would know that, would not want their child to maybe fall sick or yeah. that, that, um, develop um, um, and weight problems, yes. which can eventually lead to a thing like bullying, yeah. you know, sure. yeah, sure. or being body shamed, in you know, school. Yeah, yeah, in school and even at home. Mm. Mm. A lot of parents and, and uh, cousins, you know, for extended family do the bullying thing with the mindset that it might encourage the child to make that decision themselves. Does that work? No, because at the end, of, I, I have. There was a time um, uh, I was. I went to see a friend of mine, and you know, she, and I heard her telling her child. You know, she had dished some food for the child, and I heard her telling her child, "Okay, can you please?" Um, 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 and the child was like, "Well, mommy, I, I've had one or two spoons. I'm fine." Wow. And and the, the mother wouldn't listen. The mother said, "No, you must finish that, that food." Food. You know, and eventually, the ch if you give the child a mountain of eba, the child is going to finish it because wow. the child has gotten accustomed to that. So at the end of the day, the child developed that. Okay. And the mother started body shaming that child. After you understand? She essentially After she had it. enabled it. Wow. And wow. she now says, You eat too much. Wow. You know, you're always eating. Wow. But he can't wow. stop because you have created that. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you, you have to undo what you have done. So, Coco, thank you so much for coming to talk to us about this. We've only just started to scratch the surface of the deeper issues yes. uh, when it comes to childhood obesity. Of course, we do understand that there are health issues behind obesity as well, and we are not oblivious of that. But um, let's think about this from the parenting angle. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Tag us, Wake Up Nigeria TVCE, and uh, let's know what you think. MM is on standby in the kitchen. And uh, yeah, we're going to be having that conversation later I on, am, aren't we? Yes, mm. I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Interesting conversation there. And uh, well, this is a healthy recipe oh. for kids. It's sweet. It's healthy and it's nutritious. I bet kids are absolutely going to love this. In the kitchen with me is Belleful Gang, and we are making sweet potato porridge. Yes, we are. Uh, so let's run through the ingredients and uh, talk to us where we're at right now. Let's go. So right now, we're still boiling the potatoes to okay. soften up. So in the process of that, we can add our protein. Okay. Since it's been pre-boiled or parboiled rather, mm -hmm. and it still has a bit of seasoning and all that. Mm -hmm. Put like a toss it into the potatoes, Pots. yes. Okay. So that is the flavors and the seasoning and everything. Would loosen up and then all the flavors will begin to come together. So let's um, open up the pot in a bit. So in there we have, what do we have in there? We have just the potatoes, then salt. Okay, potato, sweet potatoes, guys. Sweet potatoes. If you're wondering what potatoes we're using this morning, sweet potatoes. We want to, you know, um, relish the the essence of this porridge. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet potatoes, absolutely going to do justice to it. But then again, you could also have yams and then add your sweet potatoes to it. Yes. For it to give that, you know, extra sweetness that you're looking for in your yam porridge. And then I think what you also do is basically when you um, cook your yams and then you put in your sweet potatoes, you bring them, bring out the sweet potatoes when they're cooked and then you mash them and then put them back in the pot. And not really, not everyone likes it mashed. Some okay. people still like to eat the old chunk. Oh, the few. potatoes, yes. right. So it's, some will be like matched already yeah, while we still leave you still the, have the, the chunks oh, okay, in there. Okay, the chunks in there. Fantastic. Okay, um, so we are putting in our bomo. <laughs> and our sorted meat. And our sorted meat. Ah, nice. Okay, we're going to allow all of those flavors come together. You remember, you know, but sweet potatoes has its own flavor. Yes. Mm. With or without salt. Yeah, exactly, sweet. with or without salt. It's very sweet. Mm. It's been a while I had sweet potatoes. 
sweet potato for a sweet morning. Yeah, I spent a while I had sweet potatoes. And the thing that I actually, it's, it's a must have in my house. Yes. Sweet potatoes, Irish potatoes, yams, always a must have. It's a go to meal. Yeah, it's because it's like your go to meal, yes. right? And kids absolutely love, yeah, it, love it, especially when they're prepared really well. Yeah, you can right. boil it, you can fry okay. it, you can grill it. Um, it. Yes, yeah, so now that we have our proteins in there, what's yes. next? And while it's boiled, when it's softened up completely, okay. then we're adding our smoked fish. Okay. So that one to additional burst of flavors mm -hmm. in there. Then we had our pepper, pepper mix, mix, our palm oil, then the seasoning, then okay. the last to just be the vegetables. All right. Just Remember, to guys. Stuff like give it that colorful look. Yeah, that. that extra color. Remember to not um, overcook your vegetables once you put them into your meal. You want them fresh, crunchy, and you still want to retain all of its nutrients as well. Great stuff happening here in the kitchen. Our pretty our breakfast on a budget. Yes, that's what we're ascribing this meal to. It's our sweet potato porridge, and we can't wait for it to be ready. We'll go on a quick break, guys. The show continues shortly. Stay with us. Hello and welcome back to the galley. Now here is where all the magic happens. Today, we are the tea. We are that serving and sprinkle of deliciousness. Mm. Right? Grab your aprons, <laughs> uh, your jackets, whatever you need to join us as we set sail on this wonderful television breakfast experience. Yeah. It is already a morning to remember. And definitely, well, when, you know they say, uh, may everything be in your favor. They say yep, the tides. Lord. And the tides. Our favor this time. Mm, and uh, we're setting sail mm -hmm. so for you to stay tuned. We've yeah. had a wonderful hour so far. We've looked at the kitchen. A beautiful chef who is smiling even more than yeah. MM. And so that is quite <laughs> something that we can look forward to. So uh, definitely <laughs> when. Things in our favor this morning. Breakfast is definitely in our favor. So mm. for those of you on a food farm journey, for those of you looking for breakfast on a budget, well, mm. we have got you covered. Our potatoes are cooking up pretty nicely in the pot and then all of this are going in very shortly. All right, okay, it's good to be a great show this yeah. morning. My name is Mike Messicano. And my name is Titi Lyle. So now you know that they say that the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. You decided to take that step with us today and we appreciate you. All right. Streaming yeah. the show live, live is possible definitely. on YouTube. Just search for TVC Entertainment on YouTube. Uh, it's very simple. We're right there streaming live right now. Our app is also available. You can download the app. It's available on the Apple iOS store and also the Google Play Store where you can watch us mm -hmm. anywhere mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. Our social media is agog with all sorts of behind the scenes footage coverage. All our guests are posting and tagging us. Use the tag, hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC or tag us on our Instagram page. Uh, that's Wake Up Nigeria TVC. All right, let's get straight into what we have left for you on the show. Yep. This uh, morning we've it's had... Um, yeah, it is, it is. Then, of course, we'll be having our health conversation. It's all about Mental Health Awareness Week. We have S.A. Ayegwene, uh, practicing counseling psychologist for the past decade, specializing in working with individuals in need. Primary objective is helping clients overcome trauma and enhancing their mental resilience. Anxiety, depression, and other topics will come up later on. And then for a musical performance, we have Bola Nwa Asheshe Onyusanjo, who's a Nigerian creative who has a deep passion for artistic expression, evident in his diverse work across production and entertainment. And uh, well, that's quite a lot when it comes to what somebody is doing for his community. He'll be here to serenade us this morning. And then we will be having Bob Cow. He's based in New York. He started his fashion career producing a local event, A Night in Tokyo. Now, the success of this event paved the way for his career as a writer. And as a fashion writer, he's been published in Chasseur Magazine, 360 Magazine, Helio Style, and many others. He's in Lagos for a special reason, and we're going to be finding out exactly what's going on later on. All right, welcome back, and thank you for staying with us. It's a Mental Health Awareness Week, and joining us is Essie Ayebene. She has been a practicing as a counseling psychologist for the past decade, specializing in working with individuals in need with the primary objective of aiding clients in overcoming trauma and enhancing their mental resilience 
to combat mental health issues like depression, anxiety, and suicide ideation. It is great to have you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. So it's Mental Health Awareness Week. Yes. It's yes. just it's it's just this week out of uh, is it out of the whole year. I know we have a month. Somewhere this is also. actually the month. Okay, this is actually the yes, month. Yes. And then this week is the this week is month. yes yes. All right. And uh, and the theme is movement. 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 Move for your mental health. How 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 can movement help you? Okay, when so it comes to I could health? give you um, statistics of of um, various um, research and all, but. Let's take our minds back to COVID, mm, mm. when we could not move. Oh. We had a surge in issues of depression, anxiety. A lot. And that was when people started saying, oh, mental health, mental health. It became a thing yeah. because we could not move. Mm. So just that alone is enough to prove that movement is a, like a key factor in helping to build your mental resilience. Mental, having a healthy mind is very important. You know, I'm just thinking about some people who I know who maybe because of maybe they're, they're not working or something and yes. they're just in one place. Yes. Most of the time, um, some uh, nursing mothers, yes. uh, as it were, or yes. would I say some housewives, as, it, as yes. it were, who are just in one spot and all of that. And yeah. I'm wondering how, how much they, they would be helped mentally if they would move around a bit. In situations like that, maybe they don't have so many places to go to. Yeah. How can they move? So if you notice, it wasn't specific like exercise said okay. movement movement so 10 minutes brisk movement that's not walking slow just walking really fast 10 minutes is good and you're good mm. you understand so it's yeah. not always about oh i need to pay for the gym i need to lift weights i love <laughs> i do those things yeah but if you don't have that money just take a walk now you can bathe in nature a lot of mm. us don't even understand the importance of fresh the fresh air fresh we have air. around, you understand? We cut down trees in our compound, say, okay, witches and whatever. We tend to look down. You, I'm but telling you. Having those things around nature, there's something in Japan called a nature bath, where you just mm. go out in the in the, the forest or somewhere around where you have. I've just finished a Japanese just, series, and I understand exactly what you're talking about. They go to oasis that are natural. Exactly. Maybe rocks around them, and they just sit in yes. it. Yes. Do you know the reason why the water side is more expensive? Mm. One of it is because it's peaceful. It is. Yeah, I, so I, I had took a trip to Sierra Leone. I was in Freetown for a while. And waking up for two weeks around water, I realized why we used to have people record the sound of waterfalls as a means of calming yourself down. In fact, oh. for those two weeks, it was calming. Just hearing the, the, the waves on the seashore, that, that sound every morning. I was hearing it every morning. It was enough for, for me to wake up happy. You understand? So when people pay so much for that, a lot of people don't even understand why it's expensive. They think about just the scenery. Yeah. It goes beyond that. You understand? Having, having nature around you is important. And the, okay, one of the things I've been seeing, and something I've, I'm really pushing, we're having a conversation this week with other African psychologists. Exactly, I was about to get into that activities, but go ahead. Yeah, so this week, I'm, I'm actually discussing with a lot of African psychologists to see how we can actually see things from our perspective. Now, one of the things we've noticed lately is we didn't have these issues before. Why are we having them now? And one of the things you should see is urbanization. So, so we're taking a lot of nature from us. We want to look more modern. So we see a lot of plastic plants. We see a lot of plastic grasses. We see a lot of things that are no longer natural. We used, mm. to, ha we used to have this Well thought and planned out urban exactly, areas and all of exactly. that. Everywhere is so... The air uh, is not clean. Yeah, it is when not. When you leave Lagos, as soon as you get to that boundary, it's like it's a different air. It have is. you noticed that? It is. You're calmer. It is. So pollution people, and all of that, industrialization it as does, it were, yes. uh, mechanization, exactly. all of that is affecting the Another, air thing, and another key thing is diet. Uh. As, so most times we're always thinking about diet, about shape, you know, looking good. It also helps our mental health. You eat a lot of junk food. You don't take enough water. You don't, you don't take care of your body. I don't know who told us that when you have money, the first thing to do is to eat junk. You know, like, you know, we just incidentally, <laughs> I am on a series, Hack Your Health, on okay. Instagram. I was talking about the, the, the connection between the gut and the brain. Exactly. And how important your mental health can even be affected by what you eat. Exactly. Exactly. I used to, I used to have, okay, so why I started mental um, resilience? So in 2020, I got into depression. I, got, I started having suicide ideation. And this has been a thing I've been on for years because I... I didn't even know what it was, but I was depressed when I was in primary school. The first mm. time I attempted suicide was in primary school. 
Oh, wow. So I've had such experiences. So I've been in that cycle for so long. I've attempted, I've had suicide ideation. I've had that for, like, I'm 40 this year, so I've had that for, like, over 20 years of my life. And in 2020, I went into depression again. I was like, no, this can't just happen. I can't say I'm a psychologist and I'm still depressed. What can I do? It was tough for almost yeah, it everyone. Was, but it made me discover mental resilience. I started researching. I said, there's a way to build my mind. There's a way to fortify my mind. How did you I should this? be mental resilience. Yes. So, so when I say I'm a mental resilience expert, it's not just a name. Okay, it's fine. It's nice. No, it's because I see it as a way forward. So instead of me to go out there and telling people, oh, when you're depressed, you're sad for two weeks, you're sad for three weeks, you know, start telling them symptoms, what to look out for or what to, no, let's build a mental strength. Fortify your mind. And it comes with diet. Like lately, I did something with my children. I've removed cereals from our meals. This morning, they ate rice. Sometimes they eat it in the morning. They eat food. Beans. That thing, it's, it's scary, but I know that cereal. You understand? Taking cereals out of the out meal of, for children, you are doing a lot. I'm them. not saying they don't eat cereals at all. Mm, but they do. Not it's not regular. No, it's not, it's not their meal. It's addictive. Those things are addictive. Sugar is addictive. Sugar is addictive. Sugar, there, there was a research that was killed. There are some researches they don't bring out. There was a research that yeah. came out, and they didn't really publicize it. They just came out there. They are, they are yeah, Let's because it will... Most people that, that fund researches are business owners. So they are thinking about their business. So somebody said something that chocolate is good for a child's brain. Who told you that chocolate? So cocoa is good for a child's brain, not chocolate, not the refined not one. The, 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 you understand? Not that more one. ultra processed. Exactly. If you want your child's brain to be better, give them cocoa to lick. Our kids were better when we were eating natural foods. That's the conversation I'm having with other African psychologists from Uganda, from, we have uh, from um, Kenya, from South Africa. How do we as Africans bring this thing back home? Because we it's didn't have these the issues. of this week. Where are these, when is it happening? Where no, is it's, it happening? No, it's virtual. It's, it's virtual, all, okay. Yes. Yeah, so how, how does one Thursday, take... 6 p.m. Okay. So if you just follow me, or follow me on, on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn. SA Ayebene. Okay. The link is there. Okay. It's, just, it's, it's a conversation we should have. The problem, the problem we're having like I said, is we are, we are, we've gotten to a point where mental health has become a clutch. Yes, when we say, I'm care taking care of my mental health. I don't want this to affect my mental health. Is that all? It shouldn't be a clutch. We should think about a way forward. So diet, movement, exercise. Wow, I wish I had more time to spend with you. No this problem. This has been enlightening. Uh, I, you're still going to be around the rest of this month. I hope you are. Yeah, and then we'll get to talk more about it. No Thank problem. you so much. Thank you for having it's me. It's been a pleasure. Welcome back. Finally, we have on the couch Bob Cow. Now, he is from the Philippines, but he's based in New York City in the U.S. And he started his fashion career producing some amazing content. And uh, something called uh, A Night in Tokyo paved the way for his career. Now he's a writer, he's been published in some amazing international fashion magazines, and it's great to have you right here on the show. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, pleasure to be here. All right, so now um, we need the world to get to know Bob Cow. Okay. Uh, so how did this all begin for you? Fashion writing, fashion producing, talk to us. Well, I started producing a local event in college. Uh, okay. It was just a college event. It was called A Night in Tokyo. Okay. Um, but it ended up being bigger than any uh, fashion event in the whole city. Wow. I was just a teenager then. So uh, from there, I saw my potential as in fashion content. Okay. And I eventually, uh, after college, I had uh, an internship at CNN. Wow. And uh, from CNN, I started producing a fashion morning show. And I've been doing fashion content uh, ever since. And now I'm at the global fashion capital in New York City. It, that is the global fashion capital <laughs> of the world. Yes. And it's uh, also a place where there's a, a lot of pressure. Um, yes. you, you seem extremely fashionable, ex extremely stylish already, just even your look. Thank Are you. Are you wearing a Nigerian designer right now? Yes, this is a Nigerian designer. Uh, his, it's a uh, Essien. Essien. Yes, yes. Okay. They, they call themselves Afro Luxury. So. Afro Luxury. And, yeah. and you, you took that... He's been on the, f on the show a few times, actually, Essien, and uh, I can see uh, how much impact fashion has had all over the world. So yes. I feel like fashion is a fusion of many different things. Yes. You know? um, but for you, what does fashion actually mean to you? Okay, well, I've been in fashion for about 12 years, and throughout the last 12 years, fashion is something that continues to evolve. Yeah. At one point, it was just a private event for buyers, and then... Uh, some point 20 years ago, celebrities are very much involved in fashion. Yeah. And uh, 
now today fashion is becoming more digital mm -hmm. and it's now becoming a form of entertainment in itself okay. like fashion is not something that clothes just people wear it's entertainment people watch fashion shows from home just for enjoyment you know okay. not essentially because they're trying to find something to wear but they're just interested in what they see what they can what, what they can learn and and how exciting it is to see people wear Probably uh, the the first thing co that comes to mind is when Lady Gaga wore wore meat. <laughs> yeah. uh, on what which which event was that? I That's the remember. Video Music Music Awards from MTV. Yeah, exactly. That's one of the most iconic, but almost <laughs> infuriating and disgusting for some people. But then it was entertaining, and we yeah. remember her for that. Uh, but then, when you think about African Nigerian fashion, what does that mean to you? So Ni Nigerian fashion is uh, very unique. I I've been to over 70 countries, and I think that Nigeria, honestly, is one of the most stylish places I've ever been to. They're very um, into self-expression, creative, unapologetic, uh, unique, and stands out. And I think it could, it could be big globally. Okay, uh, which is one of the reasons why I believe you, you came around. Yes, so yes. You said you've been to 70 countries around the world, but yes. you're in Nigeria for a reason. Yes, so yes. So let's talk a bit about that. So I'm starting an initiative called uh, FETV Hub, and okay. FETV Hub stands for Fashion Entertainment Television Hub. Okay. So it's going to be a channel that provides uh, fashion as entertainment. Okay. So it's not just going to be like streaming fashion shows. We're creating reality shows, hmm. like kind of like Big Brother, but uh, okay. we're mixing fashion into it because fashion, like I said, is becoming a form of entertainment itself. Hmm. So uh, there are quite a few reality shows on fashion uh, internationally. Um, Wow, I'm trying to remember the fashion model that, that has a... Um, oh, goodness me. The, next Top Model? Yes, next, yes. Top, te, next Top Model. But then there's also... Uh, I remember Seal's wife. What's her name again? Oh, Project Emma. Runway, Heidi Klum. Project yes. Runway, yes. Heidi Klum yes, yes, has yes. done reality fashion uh, TV for... She did it for, I think, a decade long, if not 20 longer. Years. More than that. <laughs> um, so it is something that works. Yes. But in Nigeria... What, what do you think? What's the end game here? What's the goal? Well, there's so much potential here that hasn't been uh, used yet. Okay. I, I, we, we all know, uh, as you know, you're Nigerian. Nigerians love fashion. Yeah. So why not take something like Project Runway mm -hmm. and make a, a localized version that appeals to them? Okay. Yes. So that's exactly what you want to achieve. Yes. It feels yes. like a heavy, it feels like a lot of pressure. Um, what sort of things are you putting in place to, to make this happen? Who's, who's partnering with you on this? So um, I'm being managed by um, uh, a Nigerian uh, management company. It's called Brandon's and Crusaders. They were the founders of uh, Mr. and Miss Nigeria International, the okay. Africa's first mixed pageant. Okay. And um, they put together an all-star team of um, managers, producers, okay. and um, they're, they're giving me the hookup. All right. That is a great hookup to have, I have to say. Okay. Um, but it does feel like there's a lot involved. But people that are interested in fashion, uh, it's not just the models here, the, the, the designers as well. So who are you looking out for to be part of this? Is it um, from, the, from the model side of things or the designer side of things? Uh, it's mainly the designers, but we're looking for models too. We need people to model the clothes. Okay. Yeah, and we're specifically targeting the youth because uh, Lagos has one of the largest uh, youth populations in the whole world. Okay. So we're really targeting them. All right. So I, I'm excited to see what uh, amazing, fashionable uh, designs can come out of such a competition. We, we have so much fashion happening. In fact, every weekend there's a wedding and you, you, you yes. get there and you see something huge, something mind-blowing, and then you wonder why it's not being celebrated. Uh, but, you know, one thing about competitions, especially in Africa, is once you have a competition, uh, not really much happens after the competition is done. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens, what, what do these designers get? Um, what happens after the competition is done? Talk to us about that. Okay, so um, on top of prize packages that we're working here that we can't necessarily reveal right now, okay. um, I'm based in New York, I work in New York, and we want to take whoever wins and expose them to New York, maybe put them in New York Fashion Week, wow. the world-renowned uh, largest fashion event in the world. Okay. So that's something that uh, I'm sure everyone wants to be a part of. All right, then. So this might be somebody's route to fashion week in the u.s but yes. bob I, I have to ask you now about your experience here in nigeria so far yes. uh, how many times have you been here first of all and then uh, what's it been like okay this is my second time okay yes. all right and um so far uh it's been good um, people over there are very very nice i mm. think 
uh, very, very uh, generous. People here are very helpful to me. And people here, what I like the mo about the most, they're very committed to entertainment and culture mm. and the arts, mm. you know. And like I said, I've, I'm well-traveled, but it's heavily focused here as opposed to other places. I'm going to try and ask you to compare how we are here to another country. What, what does this place remind you of when you think of all the other countries you've traveled to? Hmm. Hmm. I would say <laughs> it's like, oh, it's a hard question. A hard um, question? Okay. <laughs> uh, it's like Manila from my own country, the Philippines. Like, really? Filipinos are very into enter entertainment as well, even yeah. though there are people who, who are in the have-nots yeah, section of, of society. Of they're, regardless of what they don't have, they're mm -hmm. still committed to the arts and uh, putting their best self out there. And that's what Nigeria is. I, 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 I'm so happy you said that. Because culturally speaking, we also love food here yeah. in Nigeria. Uh, any Nigerian food come to mind? What have you tasted? Uh, I had a lot, but the ones I remember are uh, moi moi. Okay. I said that right? Yeah, moi moi. And uh, pepper soup. <laughs> pepper soup, and you like those? Yes, yes, right? yes. I like Nigerian food. All right, then. Uh, you're going to taste something in the kitchen today. Okay. We have a chef in the kitchen sure. uh, who is going to you know, give you something to taste, and you tell us what you think. Sure, sure. All right, then. Thank you so much for joining us, Bob. Thank you. All right, let's head over to the kitchen. All right. <laughs> let's go. Okay. All right, welcome to the kitchen, Bob Cow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is Chef Ooh. Julie of the Bella Full Gang. And this Bellafull. morning, she's made for you sweet potato porridge. Yeah. Sure, sure. So in there, there's Bomo. Have you heard of Bomo before? <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's our dried cow skin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's very good. Mm -hmm. uh, there's um, shaki. Sure. Which sure. is yeah. I've heard shaki yeah, before. That's sure. Yeah. Stripe. That's the cow from okay. the cow as well. <laughs> and there's a a body. Wow. No, I'm just I'm, I'm kidding. But there's um, basically um, assorted beef meat in there. Yeah. So please enjoy. With sweet potatoes. Okay, sure. It's so best. with sweet potatoes, yeah. there's palm so oil that was used. How do I eat this? Well. You can use a spoon. You can use a knife. Yeah. Anyone you. Anyone. Okay, sure. All right. So let's see. Oh, Bob Cow right. definitely loves Nigerian wow. food. Wow, he does. <laughs> mm. Ooh, nice. Mm. It's Hot really hot. hot. Oh, wow. So sorry. You went for it, didn't you? Uh, it went straight for the meat. Meat. <laughs> it's a little chewy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't expect about it. that. But what do you think? You like it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, like I said, I, I like Nigerian food. Oh, all great. Right, I'm then. glad you love. And uh, wishing you all the best while you're thank still you, here. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Great. All right, then. And, so, uh, wonderful show. Thank you for being a part of the show. Yes. We will see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.